With 28 years of service to country and community, Sergeant Frank has plenty of life experience to share. When his service was complete, he wasn't satisfied with retirement. Sergeant Frank founded Adopt a Cop USA, a nonprofit organization that mentors kids with law enforcement officers in our schools. His vision is to change the perception of law enforcement one child at a time. This show covers a wide range of topics with people who make positive impacts on others' lives. Today on the show, Sergeant Frank and the Bird Dog are talking with Skipper Hare of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Mr. Hare is here to tell us all about his wonderful organization and what they do for the community. It is my honor to introduce the one and only Sergeant Frank. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Sergeant Frank Show. Today, the Bird Dog and I are talking to an amazing American by the name of Skipper Hare. I don't know exactly where to start because the man is on fire for the outdoors. He's on fire for family and he's on fire for God. So welcome to the show, Skipper Hare. How you doing, Sergeant Frank? It's good to hear from you, man. Skipper, the way that I found you was all really unique and it really goes with your program because I was talking to the editor of Woods and Water Magazine here in Florida, actually in Perry, Florida. And as he showed me an article, I saw a picture and it looked like a baptism. And I immediately said, that looks like a baptism. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, you know, back in when Jesus was walking the earth, he was not, they would not let you start your ministry until you turn 30 years old. And so Jesus was faithful and he, obedient to his parents. And then when he turned 30, the first thing he did before he started his ministry was he went to go see John and get baptized in the Jordan. And so whenever, um, whenever I got saved in 2008, uh, my pastor said, when are we going to do your baptism? And I said, when we build a dock down to the river at my place, man, I want to get baptized in the river. It says in 1 John 2, 6, that if you say you're in Christ, you must walk as Jesus walked. And I said, if he got baptized in the river, I want to get baptized in the river. And so um, he told me he didn't want to wait for a dock. So we came down that day, and uh, he, he baptized me right here where I live on the Swanee River in White Springs, Florida. And that day, God changed my entire life. And so when people tell me they want to get baptized and they want to start their walk, um, I get excited about it, man. I believe that I believe that uh, Jesus was real clear when he told us in Matthew 28, 19, he says, go out to all nations, baptizing him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he said, go out and make disciples. So for me, when somebody says they want to get baptized in the river, I don't care if it's cold. I don't care if it's windy. I don't care if it's raining. I don't care. I'm going to take them and we're going to do it. And, um, we're going to get them started on that uh, on that walk that God created them for. Tell us a little bit about, well, first of all, what's the name of your organization? Um, the organization that I work with is the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Uh, and, then, you know, most people know it as FCA. And we have developed and are pioneering an outdoor ministry. Um, we've always kind of focused on to and through the coach. And we focused on sports for since 1956. But what we're doing now is that we're no longer focusing on just the athletes and the coaches. We're focusing on the entire student body. And so FCA Outdoors is a ministry that is focused on reaching every student in the school and anybody that's associated with them, whether it be a mom, whether it be a dad, whether it be an aunt, an uncle, it doesn't make any difference to me what it is. I don't, hey, if they got red blood in their veins, I'm willing to talk about Jesus and, and tell us about the trips that you do. What what kind of, give us an example of one of the trips you would do with these kids. The first trip I did last year, because I've, I've been working with FCA now for just a little over a year. I was actually doing these trips on my own prior to being with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. But my first trip I went on last year was Brooks County High School. They wanted to take their football team and their coaching staff on a canoe trip down the Swanee River. And so what I did was I loaded up all their seniors, and I loaded up about four coaches, and we put them in some canoes, and we put in the Swanee River, and we camped out for, for two nights and three days, and we just ministered to them for 72 hours. 
And I'm telling you, it was one of the most impactful things I've ever done in my life. We did a, a little video to celebrate the weekend, and we put it on Coach um, you coach his Facebook, the coach in Brooks County, Coach Freeman. We put it on his Facebook, and about a week and a half later, there was over 46,000 views of that video. Wow. Hmm. And on these trips, is it just the is it just the kids? Are the parents allowed to go? Tell tell us how that all works. Well, I did another trip last year where I took a group from a from a Baptist church over in Newberry, and there was there was five seniors that wanted to go, but there was also five adults that wanted to attend, and I was okay with that, you know, because Jesus loves them all. And what I found in that trip was was remarkable because even though I was trying to minister to the to the seniors, God really showed up and impacted the adults. And one of those guys that went with us on that trip is in the process of praying about being a part of FCA as a part-time outdoor guy. So, you know, one of the jobs that I have with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes is to tr try to find other men that are interested in being a part of the outdoor ministry in the state of Florida. So you're teaching young men to become men, and you're teaching men that are ready men to be better men. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, we've, we've always focused in FCA on to and through the coach because it is true that the coach impacts more people in one year than most people will on the lifetime. That is a truth because I coached for over 20 years here in Columbia County. That is a, that is a, that is a very, very valid point. However, fathers impact their families in a greater way than we, could, than we can explain. And let me give you an example. 93% of the time, when a father comes to Christ, the, the entire family will follow suit. 93% of the time, when a father comes to Christ, the family will follow suit. Now, let me show you the, the flip side of that. 95% of men that are in prison were raised in a home without a father. So there's a direct correlation between a fatherless situation and ending up in prison yes absolutely and this is the this is the part that's so crazy is that there's a correlation but the reality of it is is that we may be able to reach kids at a mass level through a coach but we can reach levels at a very high percentage through a father you know it's really interesting in south florida where you're it's almost impossible. You'll never hear a teacher praying in class. Yet the first thing they do when you go to prison is to give you a Bible. If we <laughs> could reverse that and gave our children Bibles, maybe we could decrease the amount of people that are ending up in prison. Well, this is the truth. This is the truth. You know, you see people, I mean, and right right now, let me tell you something that just absolutely breaks my heart. We're watching our government waste billions of dollars arguing with one another over nothing. I mean, it, we have the president we have. There's, They're not going to change that right now, but they're going to sit there and spend four years of, of taxpayer dollars arguing over it. Now, that, to me, is a direct result of the fact that we don't have God in our schools and we don't have God in our homes like we need to anymore because the reality of it is is that it doesn't make any difference who you elect to sit in the White House. That's not going to change our country the way it will if we get men to be the men that God called them to be and if we get men to stand up and, and focus on being the godly father, the godly husband, the godly brother, the godly co-worker, when we get men to understand that people are following them and they start living the way that God created them to live, that's when we're going to see change in our country, not in elections. That's not going to be a major factor in the, in the, in the, in the betterment of our country. I, I couldn't agree more. I've heard people say that change happens, needs to happen from the top down, but I don't just, I totally disagree with that. Change has to happen 
from the bottom up. You know, if you <laughs> want to talk about where where the Christian faith began, it began with one man who came to earth and then he went out and got 12 people and then those guys went out and they got people and and so on and so forth so and the and the the teachings were directly related to that situation to really give the guidance that was needed to develop a a plan to get these people <clears throat> to the right situation to the right location so i think that a lot of times um the media and you know bird dog and i were in law enforcement for 50 years together the the breakdown of this country was when prayer and patriotism was ripped out of our schools and people are sitting around wondering what happened well it's pretty obvious of what happened and what needs to be put back in place and i think you're right it has to start at home and it has to start and our children are craving that structure and the only way they're going to get that structure is by re by reading and studying the instructions that was handed down to us by the word of god you know i was i was looking the other day at proverbs chapter 8 proverbs chapter 8 is all about wisdom but if you read proverbs chapter 8 and you compare it to the first chapter of the book of john the first book in john is describing jesus and Proverbs chapter 8 is talking about wisdom. But if you read them parallel to one another, you will see that Jesus is being referred to as wisdom in Proverbs chapter 8. And a lot of people say, well, I want to, you know, I want to, I want to know, um, I want to know, I want, I want to gain wisdom. I want to make good decisions. Well, the way that you make good decisions is, is you get to know the author of the Bible. That's the way you get to make good decisions. That's when you're going to get your wisdom. And so, what we're just trying to do is we're trying to take people into the outdoors because, see, God created us and put us in a garden. He didn't put us in a building. And so we're trying to take people back out into the wilderness to seek God's face, and God will show up. He'll honor that effort when you go out there and, and break away from the cell phone and break away from the business and break away from, you know, all the things that are going on in your life, and you just focus on hunting Jesus down. He's going to show up, and he ain't just he's not just going to show up. He's going to show up in the the most powerful way you've ever experienced him before. And you're going to walk off of that event knowing how much he loves you and how much he wants you to actually follow the plan that he's created for you in your life. You know, it says in Ephesians 2 10, it says that we are God's workmanship and we were created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he prepared in advance for us to do. God's got a plan for every one of us. And this is the coolest thing, Sergeant. There's only going to be one Sergeant like you. There's never been one like you. There's never going to be another one like you. You're the only one. And we're referred to as a seed in the scripture. And this is the coolest thing about that. There's only one seed like you. And so the fruit that comes off of your life, the godly fruit that comes off of your life is unique into itself. And the world doesn't need to miss out on the fruit that's inside of you or any other man for that matter that's listening. Well, I think if our children learn that at an early age, we would not have these horrible situations. There's the number two killer of our children in this country is suicide. Wow. And these kids have, they have no idea because they're being, they're, they have, they, they come into a crisis and they don't know how to handle it. Even though we have the answers, they are not ready to handle any situation outside their normal thing. And it comes from social media. It comes from a very ungodly lesson plan in the world and i think you're you're right when you say when you bring these kids to a situation and the parents i think the parents tell me how much the parents get out of these trips compared with the children well you know when i first took that group with the with the seniors and their parents you know i thought to myself i don't know how this is going to work out you know, because I really don't need five parents with five kids. I, I, you know, that just that's, that's a little overkill. But as I was turned and looking at the kids and, and talking about God's plan for their life, when I turned around and looked behind me, several of the men were in tears. And I thought to myself, I never thought that these men were going to have such an encounter. But I'm telling you, the parents that come, 
the word of God is not bias. It doesn't make any difference whether you're 14 or whether you're 50. When it gets into your heart, it's going to penetrate and it's going to it's going to show you things that you've never seen before. And so it really, honestly, the, the neatest thing about these trips that I do, and I do more than just the canoe trips. I do a lot of different stuff in the outdoors. But when we do one of these trips and take somebody into the outdoors, watching how God moves on their heart and how God changes them from the inside out, and it doesn't make any difference whether they're a teenager, whether they're elementary school, or whether they're in their senior senior years of their life, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, when, when God impacts people, it makes a difference. I got a couple Bird of dog. questions. Go ahead. I was just going to ask you about the, uh, the, the, the parental thing, but go ahead and ask your question. And I'm going to go back to that about the, uh, one of our bass fishing trips. Okay. I'm curious because the name of your organization is the fellowship of Christian athletes. Do people that y'all take out have to be athletes? Oh no, man. That's, that's why we, that's why we developed this part of the ministry was because since 1956, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes have, have, have had a core focus of to and through the coach. And so what we've done with the outdoor ministry is we've said, no, you know what? There's a much larger percentage of the, of the schools that are not involved in athletics. So what we did was we said, we don't know young people, a young person that doesn't like swimming, shooting a bow, fishing, hiking, camping. We don't know a young person that doesn't dig that. So what we're going to do is we're going to develop an outdoor ministry and we're going to go out and we're going to reach every student in the high school, in the junior high school, in the elementary school, and we're going to invite them to come to an event and we're going to preach the gospel to them and we're going to, we're going to use a, 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 some kind of a method that's going to draw them in and, and, and take them out there so they can experience God at a different level. So um, that was the entire focus of the outdoor ministry was to reach all the people that we can get to, not just... I was I was telling um, Sergeant earlier today that me and my wife, we do a marriage ministry called Become One. And just a, a few months back, we did a full moon canoe trip on the Suwannee River, and it was all married couples. You know, so we um we reach out to anybody and everybody. It doesn't make any difference whether you're an athlete or whether you're in the band or whether you're um, in the cooking class or culinary or whatever. It doesn't make any difference if you are breathing and you want to go in the outdoors, and you're willing to listen to somebody tell you how much Jesus loves you, we're going to find a way to get out there with you. All right. Well, that you kind of answered my second question with that as well. I was wondering if if y'all were reaching out to people or if people had to somehow find you. So, Yeah, we'll be doing a marriage conference in February. Um, we're going to put that on Facebook. If you guys out there, if anybody listening, if you guys want to connect with us, um, please go to fcaod.org, fcaod.org, and uh, reach out to us. My email is shair at fca.org. That's shair at fca.org. And, th- and my phone number is 386-365-7377, 386-365-7377. I'd love to hear from you, man, because I'm telling you right now, um, God loves you. He cares about you. And he wants to see you make a difference in this world. Going back to my question, to bird dog about the fishing trip and the parents, can you share with our, you know, with, 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 uh, Skipper about the experience that we had with, with John and his son on that bass fishing trip down in Palm beach County? Yeah, yeah we, uh, we, we we go down to Palm Beach County and we we set up trips for when we go fishing trips. So you know if we're gonna drag the boat from up here all the way down there, we want to have things scheduled. So we had a uh, two day schedule. We had a, a three day weekend that we were gonna go down there for, and we had two days scheduled for some kids and and some parents. And we took a uh, a kid that had uh, or is battling cancer and his family out. And man, that was. That was great for me because they just had a, a absolute great time. But the uh, second day, the people that were supposed to go just refused to answer the phone. And we were like, what the heck? You know, we scheduled this. We've been talking to them for a few days. Uh, I had talked to them probably two days before this. And then just out of the blue, they refused to answer the phone anymore. And I, and I say refused. I don't know what happened. I still haven't heard from them, you know, from this day. And that, and that was a couple months ago. But uh, so our plan was 
that's okay. We'll, you know, we'll adapt to this and we'll, we'll go find uh, a parent and a kid, you know, fishing on a bank or fishing on a, a pier or something. And we'll, we'll invite them out. So <laughs> we went to a few places, a few inlets and <laughs> we were striking out left and right. And it, I think we spent, what was it like an hour and a half, Frank, <laughs> looking for for a place for people including you know sergeant frank approaching kids at a playground which i don't think was yeah, very I'm good surprised idea. The, i'm surprised the police didn't get called because <laughs> there's this there's this guy with a cowboy hat wearing this multicolored uh fishing shirt saying hey you, you guys want to go fishing and the parents were like oh my gosh you know it's not north florida it's a different world yeah so we we pretty much gave up and i was like you know what we're here Let's launch the boat. Let's go out and get some video footage because we do not only do we take kids fishing, we do videos and we post them on our YouTube channel, which is Adopt a Cop USA official site. And uh, we put a video together and, and the kids not only get to enjoy it while they're out there, but they get to live it over and over and over again and show their friends. So anyway, we were going to go out and just get some footage of some fishing and, and different things. And uh, I Frank backs me down into the water and I, I'm out in the water and he goes to park the truck and I just happened to, I don't know why, look over to the left and I, and I saw, you couldn't see him from the, from the parking lot, but I saw a kid out there like, a, he seemed like he was about eight or nine years old and uh, he's fishing with two, two men. So I was like, oh, one of them's got to be his dad, obviously. So I'm out in the middle of the lake because I, I don't stay right at the dock. I wait till he comes down and then I come back to the dock to get him. But I, I'm waving and I'm I'm like making these hand signals, almost like I was trying I was coaching baseball or something and trying to tell him you know keep going. But anyway, so finally he uh, understood what I was saying and he went down and talked to the to the dad and the son and their friend and they were happy to go out with us, which was awesome. So we took him out and uh, we told him about our program, you know why we did this and all that good stuff. Never told him anything else about, you know, that we're a nonprofit, that we take donations, all that kind of stuff. So at the end of the day, you know, they had so much fun. You know, he asked us a little more about our program. We told him, and then we went on about our business. And uh, was it that night, Frank, or was it a couple? Yeah, I think it was either that night or the next day, but yeah. I want to say it was that night. All of a sudden, we get a $500 donation. And I was like, wow. oh, oh, my goodness. Just because we grabbed this kid and his father off the dock, they gave us five hundred dollars for our program. Obviously, we touched their hearts. You know what I mean? So, amen. It was it was a pretty pretty awesome thing. I was I was so impressed. I, I don't even I didn't even have words for it. And you know, and, and Skipper was and I were talking about that today and about how God will provide what you need for this mission and. I, I think that, you know, the message that you gave me today went a lot further than you, you probably know, but really appreciate you taking a little bit of time today to to give Sergeant Frank a little of encouragement because sometimes when we're battling the, the demonic world and we just had two uh, occasions where a, a very evil-filled person attacked us, if you don't have the whole armor of God wrapped around you, you could you could probably, you know, be affected by that. Don't. Unfortunately for this demon, we're ready. And I've been studying and getting myself prepared for these attacks. And the more good you do, the more attacks are going to come. So we've been we've been rebuffing some of these problems. And I think with your, you know, I, I find it amazing. So you said you were um, a senior pastor, pastor, sorry, pastor, senior pastor. And you also were a football coach or a coach. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So you have a, 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 a pedigree of leadership in coaching and coaching people to Christ as well. Well, I tell you, man, I've, I've worked with kids for a long time coaching them. And then when, when I came to Christ in 08, I realized real quick, man, that, you know, I tried pretty much everything the world had to offer. And there was nothing like seeing – someone surrendered their life to Christ. And one of the things I believe God's gifted me with is just, just to be an encourager. And the one thing I can tell you about the attacks, you know, because a lot of people, a lot of people shy away from God's calling because they don't want to get in the crossfire, crossfire, the crosshairs. But this is the reality of it is the more you have struggles and the more that comes against you when you serve God, 
the bigger your calling is. You know, the enemy doesn't pay attention to people. If, 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 if you're listening to this right now, somewhere out there, whoever you may be, and you're not having run-ins with the devil, it could be because you're traveling in the same direction. Because um, when you start traveling in the opposite direction of Satan, you're going to have some challenges come your way. But if you keep in the back of your mind all the time that the bigger the challenge and the bigger the attack, the bigger the calling. If you keep that in mind, it, it really helps you get through those things. And, and there's, a, there's a promise in Scripture, and it, it's Philippians 4, chapter 6 and 7. I'm sorry, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God, and the peace of God that transcends all human understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And I tell people all the time, man, don't sit there and worry yourself to death because the reality of it is the more you face, the bigger your calling is. And when you get that into your mind and you get that ingrained in the way that you think, you realize the enemy's coming, but in advance, you know that when he comes, you know what direction you're going to go. And I, I'm telling you, Sergeant Frank, I could give you I just gave you a couple of examples today of God showing up in my life. I could sit down with you and go for hours and tell you things that God did in my life. I'm talking about small things to very, very big things. And I could share them with you, man. I could just, I mean, literally for hours, I could share God's blessing in my life over the last 11 years. And I tell people all the time, man, and once you get into God's groove, everything changes. Well, we're definitely going to listen to some of those, and we're going to get as many of those out to the masses for those people that they need that encouragement. They need to understand that God's on their side. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about your Woods and Water articles that you write in that publication, because that's how that's how we came together was a picture of a baptism. Tell me about the articles that you write monthly for Woods and Water. So I met the editor of the magazine at an event that I had a booth set up at. And during that event, he came up to me and he said, hey, I'm the editor. Come by and see me. And my thought was he wanted to do like just an article about the outdoor ministry because it's very new. Um, it's very, you know, it's in the infant stages. Um, so I kind of thought, well, he's going to do an article and, and kind of let people know what's going on. Well, I go into his office. And he says, no, man, I want you to write an article every month. And I said, oh, that is so cool, man. He wants to, you know, so he gave, he gives me the opportunity to write an article about the outdoor ministry every month. And not only does he do that, but he puts it right in the middle of the magazine and uh, puts it right in the center. And uh, I love that, man, because it's right in between the hunting and the fishing. You know, one side of the magazine is about fishing. One side's about hunting. And I just love that he sticks us right there kind of in the center of it. And I love the fact that I get to kind of just share whatever God's put on my heart. I asked him, I said, what do you want me to talk about in these articles? He said, whatever the Lord leads you to talk about, talk about it. He said, because the one thing I can tell you about people that love the outdoors, they know there's a God. And they know that there's something out there that created all that they love and they love being in. And he said, I just want them to be able to hear from someone else's perspective, you know, how a guy is using God's creation to help reach God's children. And so, man, I could be, you know, this month I wrote about a good friend of mine, Ernie Stevenson. And, and, and here's one of those God stories. When I, I was already doing the outdoor ministry um, when I was a senior pastor and I kept asking God to show me what it is that's going to help me reach this new generation, these young people that are so into the technology. And so I got this guy kind of the same way me and you met, Sergeant Frank. He gave me a number, and he said, call this guy Ernie Stevenson. And I called him, and he started asking me questions. And the more questions he asked, the more emotional he got. And I was like, man, are you, are you okay? He said, man, I've been in this ministry for 30 years. I've been working with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes for 30 years, and I'm pioneering an outdoor ministry, and I need to retire and I've been praying for two years that God will send somebody. And everything that you've told me today is everything I prayed for to, down to the very detail. Wow. wow. He, he said, you are the guy I've been praying for for two years. And so um, for the first year when I was with the organization, Ernie kind of took me up under his wing and kind of showed me what all he had been doing in the ministry. And then on May 3rd, after I got the opportunity to spend 
three days with him at an outdoor conference. Um, he went home to be with the Lord at the age of 75. And this article in the Woods and Water magazine this month is about his life. It's, it's, it's a powerful article. I can tell you that right now. God wrote it, and he wrote it through me. And um, it's, it's, it, it, was, it was just amazing how God brought that article out of my heart. And uh, I sent it out to my, all my supporters because we are a faith finance ministry. And I send that letter out to all, my, uh, all of my donors. And I've had several of them call me back and just tell me how much they enjoyed it. So uh, you guys pick up a Woods and Water, flip to the centerfold for all the right reasons, and uh, check out FCA Outdoors. <laughs> for all well, the, the right good thing is, as you're getting, as you're moving your hands through that magazine, you have to go by page 14. And I'm not going to say anything else. <laughs> uh, that was a, that was a plug for those of you that don't know radio. Yeah, so we ain't talking about a plug of tobacco. Go ahead, Danny. <laughs> so, um, as far as the things that you do in the outdoors, and do you have, you know, all the equipment that you need, or you have people that volunteer their canoes, or you rent canoes, or you got, you said you go camping, you do things out in the lakes. Do you have boats? Do you have all that kind of stuff? Yeah, man. Um, luckily, uh, one of the couples that I work with uh, that I do marriage counseling with, they bought me all the canoes. They blessed me with all the canoes this year. And so I've got a full rig. I can take up to 24 uh, people at one time on a canoe trip. And uh, we. so this is what I need, though. I mean, if, if you say, hey, what, what does the ministry need? The ministry needs prayer partners. I need I need menly men to get on their knees and pray that God would bring the provision that we need for the ministry and that he would bring the hands and the feet. Because the reality of it is, is the majority of the young people that I take into the outdoors, there's, there's, there's some things in common. Most of them have never fished. Most of them have never shot a gun and almost a hundred percent of them have never cleaned an animal, whether it be a fish, a squirrel or deer or anything, Turkey, it doesn't make any difference. They've never cleaned an animal. So we not only do we take them out there, but we harvest some of the animals. We teach them how to clean them. We teach them how to cook them. We teach them how to take it from, you know, from from provision to the table. And I need I need outdoorsmen that know how to handle weapons, that know how to shoot uh, bows, that know how to fish, that know how to tie a fishing line, that know how to can canoe, that know how to shoot a bow. That know, I mean, I, anybody if you if you love the outdoors. And you've been praying, God, what can I do? What is it that I can do? Well, you know, how are you going to use me? Listen, you're not listening to this for just for just because you like listening to a podcast. God had a divine appointment for you to hear this right now. And I need you to contact me and let me know that you're interested in getting involved. And we'll put you on the list of team members that we have. And I'll give you guys a calendar of all the events that we do throughout the year. We do plenty of them. And you can come and participate and be a part of some of those events. And, and and there's no pressure. I just need you to do what you do. If you're if you're good fishing, a good fisherman, you teach these boys how to fish and how to throw a fishing pole. If you're a good hunter, I need you to teach kids how to hunt. If you're if you're good with a bow, I need you to teach kids how to shoot a bow. You don't need to be you know you don't need to be anything special. You just need to be somebody that loves the outdoors and is very well versed in what it is that you love, and you need to share that with some young people and some fathers that have never done it. That sounds like we need to uh, we need to go with you on a couple of these trips, and that was that was my whole point. Is we have a boat up here? It's a twenty one foot grizzly, and it's it's pretty big, so it can take quite a few people. But uh, if you're ever in need of an extra hand with a boat, you know we are busy. But uh, if we're not busy, we, we'd certainly be willing to help. No man, I'm always up for it. You know we um we love to partner with people. It's like I told, there was a gentleman that came in from a church today, and I told him one of the wisest things that people can do in other ministries is partner with somebody that's already doing what they think that, you know, they want to get involved with. You know, this church comes to me and my wife and says, well, you put on a marriage conference. I said, I love the fact that instead of trying to do a marriage conference, that you came to someone who's already doing marriage conferences. You know, that's very smart because it not only does it help our ministry, but it also we've been there and done it so we can actually do it with better excellence. So, um, man, if you guys want to get involved with us, if you're listening, Sergeant Frank, any of you guys want to get involved with us, you just need to connect with me, man. And, um, 
we'll get you involved. There, there's, we, like I said, we do, we're going to do so many different events. Um, one of the events I want to put on is I want to put on a regional bass championship for the high school bass fishing teams. I want to put that together. And I'm in the works of trying to find out how to get that thing pulled off. So, you know, if you, if you love the bass fish, we're going to need somebody to come alongside of us and help us in that because we're going to be inviting like 150 teams from all over the southeast to come in to do a regional championship bass fishing tournament. And uh, we're going to preach the gospel to all of them. Everybody that comes in, we're going to tell them all about Jesus. If they didn't know Jesus before they got here, they're going to know who he is before they leave. That's, so, that's um, awesome. Yeah, we actually have <laughs> – it's funny you should say that of all things because I have a young man who's aspiring to be a bass um, in that field, and he's a very good Christian as well, and he could help us with our younger people as well because peer-to-peer -peer mentoring is fantastic in other arenas, and it's extremely effective in, in this situation as well. And I wanted to ask you, I think I heard a, a Bible verse about iron sharpens iron. Can you explain that? Well, what I love about that, that's uh, Proverbs 17, 17. And, and what I love about Proverbs 17, 17, um, and this is the cool thing about iron sharpening iron. A lot of people, um, they don't dig that too much because when you when you strike iron on iron, it, it, some sparks will fly. And um, the, the reality of it is, is this, man. Um, before I got saved in 2008, I was 37 years old and I had wasted all of my life. I chased money and everything that came along with money, whether it be, it didn't matter what it was. If it was in the world, I chased it and I chased it hard. And you know what I found when I got to the top of all that? It was nothing there. It was just a dead end road. And so iron sharpening iron, I want to take men out there, man. I want to get them in the wilderness, and I want to show them, hey, you could love Jesus. You could be faithful to him no matter whether you're at work or whether you're at home or whether you're a husband at home or whether you're a father or whether you're a friend. And you could love him, and you could be a respectful and honoring man of God, and you can still have fun, and you can still laugh, and you can still enjoy your life. And you know what? Your wife's going to be a lot happier. Your kids are going to be a lot happier. And all the young people around you that look up to you are going to be a lot more impressed with you than they will if you're living in the world. I tell you what, a man that loves Jesus Christ and has nothing but a nice trunk is going to be more of an impact and an influence than a man with a big house, a big boat, and a big car, and a, a nice vehicle. All those things, when you're dead, are going to go to somebody else. The only thing that's going to matter after you die is what you invested in somebody else. Amen, brother. Amen. So again, tell our listeners how they can find you, how they can. I wanted to ask you real quick, though, before we before you answer that is the prayer partners. They don't have to be here in North Florida. They could be anywhere in the country and participate in the prayer partner program. Man, I don't care if you pray in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> they don't matter. I don't care. <laughs> If you'll just if you'll just ask God to show favor to this ministry and and and, and make me wise and and bring provision and and just help me reach these kids, man, and open up the hearts of these young people when they go on these trips. I don't care where you're at, man. God God is God is no respecter of persons, man. He don't he don't he don't make any difference if you're seven or you're seventy. He's listening. It don't matter if you're in America or if you're in Africa. It don't matter. He don't care. He loves every single one of us, man, the same way. He died for all of us. Awesome, brother. Give us that locations of where they can contact you, phone numbers, emails, web addresses, all that. Okay, if you want to get on the website and check us out, man, it's www.fcaod.org. That's www.fcaod.org is the website. My email address is skip, I'm sorry, shair, S-H-A-I-R at fca.org, S-H-A-I-R at fca.org. And my phone number is 386-365-7377, 386-365-7377. And, man, I'm telling you, if, if the Holy Spirit is pushing on your heart right now to contact me, don't wait. Stop the truck, pull over, get on your device, man, and reach out to me, man. Don't miss an opportunity to do what God's called you to do, man. Don't miss it. Don't, don't tell yourself you'll do it later because you – I, I'm one of those guys. I know what later means. That means I'm going to have something else going on. So don't wait. Stop right now. Pick up the phone. Text me, 386-365-7377. I'd love to hear from you, man. Love for you to be a part of what we're doing.
Skipper, you're an amazing American, and I can tell you, as the founder of Adopt a Cop USA and the Bird Dog, we are going to be partnering up with you. We are going to be on some trips. You might even be lucky enough to meet the law dog in person. That's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on what day it is, because the law dog gets hot real quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's for dang. That's for dog gone <laughs> shore. But it was an absolute pleasure. We are going to be praying for your ministry. We're going to get involved in the ministry, in your ministry, and we're going to encourage all the other amazing Americans out there that are sick and tired of being sick and tired. There's a reason for it. There's a reason you feel the way you do. There's a reason you have this anger and and this this problems that you're dealing with. You're you're lacking something, and through the 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 amazing education and, and the, uh, the testimony of Skipper, you can find that that relief. You can find that peace. And he had exactly what he said, by helping other people, you will get that that amazing peace that you need that you're lacking in your life. But don't hesitate. Don't wait. Don't put it off. Contact this amazing American. He's going to get you on the right track. And if you have any questions, I guarantee you he'll have an answer to point you in the right direction forthwith. Bird Dog, do you have any other amazing questions for Skipper? No, I don't have any other questions at this time, but I want to plug our social media sites real quick. If you're listening to this, obviously you found us, but I'm going to repeat it anyway. Our Facebook and YouTube page have the same name, which is Adopt a Cop USA official site. And don't forget the official site part because there's a couple other prayer groups and uh, other other groups out there with the same name. Our website is myaacusa.org. That's myaacusa.org. Please check us out because our website is awesome. So we need all of you to do a couple of simple things for us. We need you to like share and subscribe to our social media platforms in order for us to keep getting our message out so thank you all for listening to our show do uh either one of y'all have any closing remarks well let me just tell you let me let me just say this before we go man if you're in the if you're listening and you believe that voting someone in office is going to change our country the enemy has deceived you i'm telling you right now the best way to make a difference in this country is for you personally that's listening to this right now to become who Jesus created you to be. That is what's going to change our country. That's what's going to change the world. So I'm asking you, don't de- don't depend on a couple of people who are being voted into office because I think we can all agree that they've abused that, they've mishandled it, and they've done a lot of the wrong things in, in across the board, across the board in politics. But the one thing that you can handle and the one thing you can control is the impact that you have on the lives of the people that God's placed around you. And so I just ask you, be the person that God created you to be, and let's change our country one person at a time. One person at a time is what happens. So I just want to pray and say, God, thank you for this opportunity to be on the show. Thank you for these men. Thank you for their heart. And thank you for every single person that's listening. God, I know that every person that's listening to this right now, you love them just as much as anybody else that's ever lived on this earth. And I just want to pray for each one of them, that if they don't personally know you as their Savior, that they would make that decision today to be what you've created them to be, God, a heart surrender, to allow you to be the Lord and guide them through the rest of their life so they can find the purpose that they were created for. God, I just pray right now that each person listening would fall deeply in love with you and not just with you, but reading your word and finding out more about who you are. Because I know that you are the all-powerful God and you love us, God. And there's people out there right now that are hurting and they're looking for an answer. And I'm just asking for you to look into the scriptures so I ask you, Lord, please help them put godly people in their lives and let them see you in a different way than they've ever seen you before. Reveal yourself to them, Lord. Show them who you are. Show them your power, your mercy, and your grace. And allow them to become everything that you created them to be. God, I love you. I thank you for everyone listening, every single heart that's beating that's listening. I thank you for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Skipper. That was awesome. Thanks for joining us this week. And we'll see you next time on the Sergeant Frank Show. This young one is not cool to be a thug. There is nothing good about going selling drugs. The money don't mean nothing when you're hammering.